guys, it's the Adventurous Allotment here. here. I'm here on my allotment. I haven't been here and doing videos as much as I would like because the weather's been quite frankly awful all week. It's been raining, it's been... it's just been terrible and I can't really get down here when that's happening. And it's been a lot wetter this winter than it usually is, even, even for winter. So yeah, I wanted to make a few videos uh, actually and uh, so the rain today is just cleared. It's wet but it's cleared away so um, I took the opportunity to come down here and do one of these videos. Um, so today, and there's not there's not much there's not really much you can do about the fruit. And obviously, this channel is primarily about growing fruit um, and vegetables to an extent. Um, but I can't really do much about that now because, of course, being in the UK, the fruit uh, fruit season has passed um, largely. Um, so at this time of year, I'm going to be talking more about ornamental plants because they have a little bit of interest sometimes um you know at this time of year when everything else has, has gone dormant there are a few ornamental plants that have interest if the weather stays on our side uh, so uh, one of those plants i mentioned in the last video but i'm going to do a more in-depth um and more in-depth video on it now and that is uh, brugmansia sanguinea or brugmansia sanguinea um and they're known as the angel's trumpets now um my plant is sort of, it's its not particularly liking this cold and wet to be honest, but it's hanging on in there and it is flowering at the moment. So I'm going to show you that and I'm going to talk about it a bit. Um, so I'll show you first the flower again. Uh, I showed you last time but I'm going to show you again. So like if we look here, you can see there this flower here. Yep, there it is. It's, don't forget here, it's the 16th. Six, I think it's the 16th of December today, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, here is the trumpet, and in there you can see it's very nice, it's very colourful. This has sort of lost some of its colour actually, but if I can show you, yeah, that's the shape of it, and this is the inside of the reproductive, reproductive parts of the plant. So yeah, that's the. Uh, that's the flower on there at the moment. I've got uh, I've got a few flowers on here. I've got a few developing ones like this one. Sorry, but this one here. Um, I've got some around here, I believe. Oh, where are they? There's one. There's one there. I've got a flower here. Uh, there's a few around the plant. Obviously, it's looking a bit tired. If you look at it, it's a bit droopy. It's a bit. It's not. It's not the greatest. It's not as healthy looking as. As it usually is in summer but uh, it's hanging on in there and hopefully if we avoid the frost maybe it'll get through winter um, as it is now now last week uh, in one of my videos I said that it doesn't it won't get through the winter but um, what it meant was it won't get through the winter in its current form i.e. the stems won't last but but uh, I've you never know never say never so Basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you a bit about this plant. So, it's quite an interesting plant. It's in the Solanum family, which is the same as potatoes, tomatoes, uh, and other plants, including this one down here, which is also a Solanum um, relative. Um, and this, this actually hails from the tropics and subtropics. This is from countries like Peru, Colombia, um, Venezuela, um, um, yeah, places like that in south, northern parts of South America. Um, and so it seems counterintuitive that this thing will grow here at all because it is a tropical plant in technical terms. However, what allows this to grow here is the fact that it, it, it comes from uh, montane regions in those areas, so where the annual temperature is a lot lower than, say, um, at sea level in the tropics. Um, so it's more suited to our climate here. And that what, that's what allows it to grow to this, this dimension in one year. It, it's also what allows it to flower quite well in the winter and it's also what allows it to grow back when it does get hit by, uh, hit by frost and is turn, uh, returned to the ground. So a lot of people a lot of people will have this and won't be aware that it is possible to grow it as a herbaceous perennial. It doesn't negatively affect it. Um, obviously people want to grow it into a tree because it's architectural and it, it, arguably it looks better. Um, 
plot, but you can grow it like this as a herbaceous perennial returning from the ground every summer. Um, so that's possible. Um, so I would say for, the, for, for people who don't think they can grow it, it's a very interesting plant. It can be grown out, so outdoors. It, uh, it is beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful flowering plants that you can grow in an exotic garden. Um, and it will flower, obviously. It's uh, in the UK pretty prolifically at times if you've got it in a good position or you've got it where it's uh, mature enough to be able to flower here. Um, yeah, so it's good. It's one I'd recommend trying to grow outdoors. They're easy to take from cutting, so literally you don't have to just uh, like risk a plant. You can take a cutting from it and grow it outside. Uh, maybe grow that cutting outside. It's fine if you don't want to uh, risk the parent plant, for example. Um, but as I've showed you here, they, they, they can do okay in the UK winter. They, of course, they won't do as well as their native habitat or even warmer areas. But, but they, they do pretty well and uh, it's really interesting to see this um, still in leaf this winter because usually by this point in December they're, they've been hit by frost and they're down to the ground and, there's, uh, and it's a long distant memory the flower but uh, yeah it's still trooping on which is great I would recommend getting one of these one um, note I'd like to caution against however is these plants are very toxic um, any um, any attempt at eating or consuming the leaves, flowers, roots or any other part of the plant will result in a very very painful and possibly even death. That, that is how toxic these plants are, they're not to be messed with. Um, so obviously you might want to think about when you're planting it around pets in the garden or children or something like that but you know if you don't have those um, if you don't have those or you're not worried about that um, yeah, it's a great, great ornamental plant, um, and it will last as well, great in this cool climate. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you've got any questions, or you want to share your experiences with Brugmansia sanguinea, or, or other Brugmansias for that matter, um, let me know, and um, uh, I'll appreciate that. Also, leave me a like, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Um, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time for another video.